<laughs> Mukhang pera to si Sir Mark. Charot. And what about it? Okay. Right. Ayan, sige. So again, dears, welcome. Welcome to the second part of our lecture. No, Our second part, rather, of urinalysis. And that is your chemical examination of urine. So before we start, so na ini clarify na ako gahapon in the in the person of Alzen. <laughs> so nag-answer siya question sa Strasinger. Yes. Wow, di ba? Oh, kabahan na kayo diyan, Lenos. Kabahan ka na. Um, Kara, kabahan ka na. Cleo, kabahan ka na. Oh, mga Adrian diyan, nag-answer na si Alzen ng Strasinger questions. Oh, kayo din. Henry spud mo, charot. Okay, check ka lang. Competitive. But anyway, yung question was, there was a question in Strasinger about radionucleotides na clearance tests. Okay? So, take note, sa clearance test, nasa handout niyo sa physical exam, your clearance test, di ba, is a measure of the rate at which a substance is cleared or removed from the plasma. Alright. Now, one of that is, of course, radionucleotides. So, ang question ato kay think number 22 sa chapter 3. Okay? Sa Strasinger. If ganahan mo mo, answer. Sixth edition. Um, ang question na ito kay radionucleotides as a substance for clearance. Then co uh, colon, letter A, you have an evaluation or it gives you a reflection of the filtration of the kidneys. Letter B, uh, requires infusion. Letter C kay... Ano sa itong letter C? Wala, nalimot ko, dears. Letter C is um, requires infusion, then something ang letter C, and then... Letter D is um, both A and C. All right. Now, gi ask ni Alzen, kaya na siya na, Sir, di ba radionucleotides is an exogenous sub substance? That is true, no? It is an exogenous substance, but the difference lang, dears, is ang radionucleotides, dili siya continuous gina-infuse. Okay? Dili siya pare sa inulin, di ba? Remember, remember that ang inulin, continuous gina-infuse ang inulin sa lawas sa patient through IV. All right, but your radionucleotides is only one shot. Okay, one time, big time, ra girl. O sarak ka injection or sarak ka infusion. So therefore, ang answer ato is both A and C. Letter D ang answer ato. Okay, I think number twenty two sa chapter three. Pakit chak na lang. I forgot the choice letter C. Okay, but ang ang exact ato dear is letter B. Your radionucleotides as a clearance test, it does not need to be continuously infused. Okay, once ra siya i inject sa patient. But again, it is an exogenous substance. When we say exogenous, again, it's outside. It needs to be infused. It needs to be injected into the patient. But the difference lang is for radionucleotides, once rasha. Okay? Once rasha I infuse or I inject. Okay? The rest of your exogenous, if I'm not mistaken, kay kailangan na continuous, such as your inulin. Okay, so take note of that. That's for clearance test. So, um, asan ako na siya nakitaan sa Branzel? So, I'm not sure if na-discuss ba siya sa Strasinger uh, kung unsay difference sa radionucleotides. Pero sa Branzel, na-mention na siya. So, if medyo naglibog mo sa Strasinger, dears, another good book na akong masuggest for CM, if you want to cross-check sa mga sources or sa mga information, is Branzel. Okay, B-R-U-N-Z-E-L. Nancy Branzel na book. Fundamentals of Urine and body fluid analysis, something like that. Okay? That's a good book. And that is one of the references po that I'm using in making your notes. That's why medyo dugay ko makapost og notes. It's because mag cross-check ko og tulo ka books. No? Yung stress, ang Brunzel and Graf na textbook. That's why medyo dugay ko maka, maka post, no So pasensya naman. But anyway, ayan. But I'm, I'm trying, uh, I'm para makasure ko na at least marag ma-comprehensive atong notes ba. Para marag dili na kayo hago sa inyong part na marag mo. Ato pag different books. But anyway, ano ragi apoy? Katulad siya po mga important stuff akong ginakuha. Alright? So if you want to further read on it, Go sa, sa Branzel if medyo kulangan ka sa information sa Strasinger. But ang Branzel medyo, ano siya dear sa, medyo kanang technical. No, medyo TMI. Dagan kayong information. So, ayun. Alright? So, mula siya clarification sa radionucleotides. Alright? For clearance tests. Alright. Now, again, for this afternoon, we'll start first with the second. Na? We'll start first. We'll start now with the second part of urinalysis, which is your chemical examination of urine. So for this presentation, of course, I'll be reusing <laughs> uh, my handout na kung gihatag sa una, sa third year, sa mga AUBF lab students dyan. Okay? Ako rang gimodify light. So the slides are again coming from the PowerPoint presentation of, of course, my idol, si Sir Jebu. Yes, the best. Sir Guasa. Alright? So narako yung ibang edit gamay and then napo yung bang notes or mga information na naadri sa PowerPoint na wala dira sa inyong handouts. Okay? So um, don't worry, ako na pong i-post ni na PowerPoint after mahumanta sa inyong soul para makaano ra mo. But majority of the additional information coming ra po siya from Strasinger. Alright? Just to, just to improve the discussion and just to 
further prove the points and all that. All right? So don't worry. You can get on just as trust. Okay. All right. Sige. So we'll start first again with chem exam. Now, of course, the chemical examination of urine is considered to be the second part. And this chemical examination of urine is accomplished through the use of what we call the reagent strips. All right? Now, these reagent strips, also known as dipsticks, ayan, nga siyang gitawag na dipsticks, kayo mo man siyang gi to snob, no? Dipsticks, ayan. Dipsticks, these dipsticks, again, is made up of plastic, all right? Kaning strip is made up of plastic, and it is inert, okay? Inert strip, inert plastic strip, meaning inert, all right? Dili siya tighatag kwarta, charot, inert na ito. Joke, inert, when you say inert, dili siya mo participate sa reactions, all right? So, inert, all right? Now, these plastic strips, inert plastic strips, they have what we call mga pads, okay? Absorbent pads and these pads contain already the reagents for each particular analyte that you want to examine all right now generally the standard yod you have 10 all right 10 ka parameters uh, in your usual na reagent strip but na ubang mga manufacturers na mo add og mga about to low. you have microalbumin creatinine and ascorbic acid okay wait lang hold ba ako dear sa ako ang whiteboard dito film maatak na siya. Anyway, all right. So muna siya ay uh, components, no? Or muna siya sulod sa imuhang uh, reagent strip. Okay? Take note of that. So these are absorbent pads. When you say absorbent, of course, maabsorb sila og fluid, all right? And inside the pads, they have chemically uh, the pads are chemically impregnated, all right, with the reagents necessary for the testing of a particular analyte. All right. Okay, so general again, you have 10 from glucose until leucocyte esterase. The additional parameters, you have 3. You have ascorbic acid, you have microalbumin, and of course, creatinine. I'm sure, di ba, familiar na mo, ascorbic acid is included because, again, it's a major interference to a lot, no, to a lot of uh, reagent uh, parameters, no, in your reagent strip. So, the appeal siya para at least ma-monitor or ma-aware ang laboratory yan na the, the sample may have contamination with ascorbic acid and ma-aware siya kung sa mga possible results ani sa mga affected na mga parameters. All right? And of course, creatinine for albumin creatinine ratio when we go to uh, protein na discussion and as and microalbumin. Another uh, parameter di ba, used especially for detecting early signs of diabetic nephropathy. All right. Okay. Sige. That's for the reagent strips. All right. All right, so here's an example we have the color chart depending on your manufacturer. Ang, as you can see, kanina sa right, you have here ascorbic, di ba? May additional na ascorbic acid. But again, to detect ascorbic acid because it's a major interference uh, to a lot of reagent strip parameters. Okay. Now, ayan, this is the first page of your notes, di ba? Sinamarize ko na, dears. No? Tinable ko na para easy ang life. Easy ang life, no? Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> ayan, so easy ang life, okay? So, ako na siyang summarize. All right, para easy na lang, no? Mag napukoy apas na notes po dears na similar sa marupok notes na kana murag summary ra gyapon. So, I will I will make it I will apas, no? <laughs> Ako lang iapas before um your compre. All right. So again, reading time is atong mga 30 seconds, you have glucose and bilirubin. Of course, is atong 40, you have ketones. 45 is specific gravity and of course, the 60 seconds very popular and I'm sure you already know the mnemonics for that. You have Papa BUN Take note, kinsa ni mga 60 seconds, Papa, B-U-N. Pero to, to be more specific yun, para di mo malibog kung unsa ng letter B, ato nang butangan ng letter L, Papa, Blan. Alright? Papa, Blan. Okay? Para make sure yun ang letter B kay blood. Kay duhara ba ang letter B? Di ba? Naibiliro B, napoy, blood. But for 60 seconds, you have Papa, Blan. Alright? For 60 seconds na mga parameters na timing, you have Papa, Blan, pH, protein, blood, urobilinogen, and of course, nitrite. Okay, all right. And of course, the longest reaction to take place in your chemical reagent strip is no other than, of course, your leukocyte esterase. Nako, this is one of the questions talaga na press the buzzer na, dears. Bisag piyungan pa lang, nako. Kapag basa pa lang, anawa na, sus ko. Press the buzzer, tap na din sa boards. Ana na level na, dears, okay? Which of the following takes the longest, nako, takes the longest to react? In your reagent strip, alam na this, you have leukocyte esterase. Pero what if balihon ang question? Which of the following parameter, parameters, okay, takes the shortest to react? Kung say mo answer. The shortest. I Yes. Shortest. <laughs> Nanadirao. Glucose. 
Okay, very good. Glucose and bilirubin. All right. So kung given ang duha, so you answer both, no? All right. Sige. If wala, then choose either of the two. Okay. All right. Sige. So again, sa Tony Monix for the 60 seconds, Papa, PP, Blan. Papa, B U N, Papa Blan. All right. Okay. Now for timing, dears, no, depende gaya mong siya sa manufacturer. Um, usually ato ginagamit is multi sticks, mong good. The multi sticks na timing they require good. The manufacturers require that the reactions take place or we read the results immediately good or following the specified time frame. No? So example, for glucose and bilirubin, dapat 30 seconds good. Within 30 seconds or after 30 seconds, marina na, na tong result. Alright? Inanag yun ang multi-stick. Strict yun sila na dapat mo follow ka sa timing. But for Chemstrip and other manufacturers, um, if ever delete kaya na, na ma-follow yun ang timing, okay ra yun na mubasa ka sa result sa tanang parameters after 120 seconds na. Alright? Depend, that is on Chemstrip and other manufacturers. Pero kung multi-sticks, dapat yun follow sa imuhang timing. Alright? So kung bilirubin, 30. Kung papabiyuan, 60 yun dapat. And ang LE, of course, 120. Bahalag unsa na manufacturer, dears, mapakemstrip, multi-sticks mangani, ang LE ra yun ang mu- uh, pabili na dapat after 120 seconds pa ka mubasa sa results. Okay? Dapat 120 seconds gudin mo hang timing for LE regardless of the manufacturer. Alright? Pero kung sa multi-sticks, uh, sa multi-sticks again, dapat strict yun for the rest of the parameters. Pero for Chemstrip and other manufacturers, they allow, no? They allow a reading within 120 seconds. Okay? So depende siya sa manufacturer. Alright? So, take note of that. Okay. Ayan. Sige. Now, we go now to, of course, the reagent strip technique. So, wala na siya sa notes ninyo, I'm sure. Alright? Pero, gikan kaya po sa Strasinger. And majority of them are, of course, very self-explanatory then. So, number one, you have, of course, the specimen should be mixed well before you dip your reagent strips. Why? Because, again, remember that in the reagent strip, we detect blood. Alright? And, of course, uh, leukocyte esterase. And these parameters can detect mga formed cells such as RBCs and WBCs. Now, if you don't mix your specimen before dipping the reagent strip, of course, delete sila, ma-detect. You cannot detect these cells. So, therefore, they can, there can be a false negative reaction in these parameters na yung test. Alright? So, make sure, again, to mix your specimen well before performing the reagent strip test or reagent strip technique, alright? Because again, to uh, let the sediments na nisato sa ilalom ma-mix siya balik. So how do you mix? Swirl or siya konti, alright? Swirl lang. Ayaw po kay Kusga para dili mayabo, alright? So swirl lang, okay? Alright. Next, you have number two, of course, once your specimens have been refrigerated in cases na there's a delay in processing, no? So you refrigerate the sample muna for a short while. Before you test it with the reagent strip, of course, it is recommended that your specimen should return to the normal room temperature. Because again, remember that the enzymatic reactions or reactions in your reagent strips are enzyme-based. Okay? Majority of them are enzyme-based. So these enzyme-based reactions are, are temperature-dependent. Alright? And if you Okay, ayan. Tulong ako, napa ko. Can you see me? Yes, Something sir. Yes, sir. Nari, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, nag-get sure to siya. Basta refrigerated sample, again, the enzyme reactions, all right, in your reagent strips are temperature dependent. So, if imo siyang itest agad-agad, pagkuha ni mo sa ref, pwedeng may inactivate ni mo ang enzyme or wala pa ni gana. So, it can lead to false negative or erroneous results. Number three, dip the strip specimen, uh, dip the strip into the specimen briefly, all right, and completely. So, sir, how brief is briefly? <laughs> Dapat with no longer than one second. So, di ko niyo siya padugayo, no? So, sa imuhang tube, usually sa tube na ito i-perform, di ba? I-deprogit siya and then tang-tang agad. Dapat dili siya mo more than one second. Why? Because again, if it's more than one second, it can lead to the leaching. Alright? Pwedeng manggawas, no? Or pwedeng mang, uh, manggawas. Yeah, imuhang mga reagents from the absorbent pads. So what happens? Wala na reagents na mabilin sa absorbent pads. It can lead to, again, still the same erroneous results. Alright? Number four, of course, we need to remove excess urine. Alright? And how do we do that? We drag, all right, or we withdraw, withdraw the strip, and then we pass it at the brim of the container. Ayan. Ato siya ipas sa brim of the container para uh, matangtang to mga excess urine, all right. And after that, of course, we blot, all right. We blot the strip 
on an absorbent pad or tissue paper. And on sa gani position, vertical or horizontally? Horizontal. Okay. Okay, horizontally, no? Imagine if magblot ka og <laughs> imagine if imo i-blot siya vertically patindog. So of course, katong mga reagent Sorry, sorry. Imagine, di ba? Imuha mga reagent strips gasunod. So, if vertical ka mag -blot, so kato mga fluid nagikan sa taas, ma, naog sa ubos, and then, and so on. So, e, na ay, what you call the runover phenomenon. Alright? So, ang imong mga adjacent pad sa taas, kung vertical ka mag, <laughs> mag dry o, you know, reagent strip, the fluid from the taas na reagent pad, manaog sa mga succeeding. And that can affect their respective results. Alright? So, how do we blot? Of course, take note, ang position is horizontally. Okay? Alright. So, unsay purpose aning blotting, no? Again, to prevent the runover phenomenon. The one that I illustrated. Okay? So, katong mga fluid nagikan sa taas na reagent pad, pwedeng manaog sa mga succeeding sa ubos, which can affect their respective results. Alright? Okay, ayan. And then, of course, next, we compare the reaction colors uh, following the specified time, okay, using the manufacturer's color chart, all right? And of course, we need to perform this under a good light source. Remember that we are detecting colors, no? And usually for observing colors, uh, it's very subjective, no? Depending ni mo kung unsay muhang <laughs> color paglantaw, no? So, uh, para mo ginawin mas standardize ato ang pag-describe sa color, kailangan ta good light source, okay? All right. And then of course, uh, good light source is needed. Yes, okay. And the color charts should not be interchanged. So, ang color chart, ang color chart sa imuhang chem strip, kay, sa chem strip, regu na siya. Ang color chart sa multi-stick, sa multi-stick, sa siya. So, dili siya pwedeng ma-interchange. Okay? Alright. And of course, as I've mentioned, uh, sa Strasinger na gaingon ani, if maglisod man good gani og time. Alright? Maglisod og time kay dagan pang gihimo or maglisu jud dili ma follow ang specified na 30 seconds 40 seconds then it is okay da uh, it is uh, it can it can it is allowed all right to read the reactions between 60 to 120 seconds all right so if maglisu man gani jud read 60 to between 60 to 120 seconds but as much as possible follow gyud sa mga specified na time reactions especially sa mga 30 seconds because uh, after 30 seconds, possible na na mag, mag change na ilang color, alright? Or mag uh, padayan ka po ng reaction sa mga respective reagent pads and can lead to mga erroneous colors na noon or dili na klaro na mga results. Alright? So, as much as possible, again, follow good sa specified time. Pero if dili, uh, allow dra ang reading the reactions between 60 and 120 seconds. Alright. Next, perform backup tests when indicated. So, uh, example, if medyo highly pigmented ang urine, uh, especially from patients taking phenazopyridine, so medyo colored iyahang urine, once your urine is highly pigmented, it can interfere with the color reactions in your reagent strips. So for you to confirm if nabagod siya protein or nabagod siya glucose, you can perform what we call the chemical tests, no? the classic chemical tests, such as your Benedict's, your um, SSA, sulfosalicylic acid, diba, for protein and all that, for confirmation. And if uh, if delete classical chemical tests, you can also use the tablet tests, right? Mga tablet tests. All right? Seven, of course, be alert for the presence of interfering substances. We have mentioned that. One of the most popular and the most <laughs> most annoying no, na interference is, of course, vitamin C, ascorbic acid. No, Understand the principles and significance of the test, of course, um, especially if mga bago ang reagent strips. No, You have to look at the insert, package insert, kung sa yung mga procedure niya. And of course, that's our job to understand the principle and the significance. Why are we performing this? No, Ganong naman yung na parameter. All right? And lastly, of course, the chemical findings should be related no, or should be checked, correlated with your physical and microscopic. As I've mentioned, the three parts of urinalysis are intercha interchange, interconnected. All right? They are very much interrelated. So, kung in any ako physical, unsa man dapat akong makitaan sa chemical. If kani ang chemical, unsa dapat sa microscopic. And if kani ang microscopic, unsa dapat sa physical. If kani ang chemical, unsa dapat sa physical, inana. So, they are all interrelated, interconnected. No, Lahat sila ay magkakaugnay, ganung level. All right? So, ayan. So, take note of that. No? Um, um, na ako experience. Actually, you'll experience that in your internship, no? Because majority of your hospitals, no, their urinalysis is automated, okay? 
Uh, so, dahi times na, imong buhat, imong buhato na lang, Jude, is the physical part. So, you take note of the color and then you take note of the clarity. The rest, ang machine ay mo perform. So, paglantan mo sa machine, muhatag mo na siya picture sa mga sediments na yung nakita. Alright? So, imong identify kung chakto ba yung pag-identify. Then, imong pong lantaw na, okay, if imong paglantaw sa urine kay, for you, inyong, imong clarity kay, ano lang, uh, clear. Alright? Pero pag kita sa microscopic, medyo ubay-ubay di ay ang mga mucus threads. Alright? So in a way, para murag dili kayo discrepant, ayan, para dili kayo discrepant ang result, you can always change your uh, clarity to medyo hazy, ana, hazy na lang or slightly cloudy to correlate with what you saw under the microscope. Because majority of your physical examination, color clarity, they're also subjective put to the laboratorian kung unsa nakita. Okay? So para niya unsa man unsa ni siya, okay? So para murag the results are not that discrepant, okay? You can you can modify, and that's how you correlate the results. Okay, so Monasha, they're all interconnected and interrelated. Okay, all right, again, and of course orientation on how you compare the strip to your um, color chart. So depending as a manufacturer. Okay, all right, pass. Okay, sorry, sorry. Ayan, okay. So, okay, ra, can you hear me lang? Okay, medyo... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay motokar akong phone. What's happening? <laughs> Magpailis na siya at siya, wala ko yung budget. Anyway, ayan, sige. So that's, no, depende siya. Depende siya on your manufacturer. So as you can see, imuha multi-sticks, which is what we usually use, di ba, sa itong class. Uh, common kaayo. Uh, horizontal, imuhang color chart. So imo siya ipahigda, pero imuhang strip is pataas sa Japan. And of course, do not, do not, do not let your strip touch, okay? touch the color chart. Why? Because I can remember that your strip is nice fluid, no? And from the urine, no? If medyo mabasa mo ang color chart, pwedeng madiscolor, no? Madiscolorized, discolorized, madis madiscolored, no? Madiscolored mo ang color chart in the long run. So, maglisun na nun kag-compare, no? So, again, do not let your strip touch, 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 touch the color chart. Okay? Alright, ayan, sige. Nako, may sinatch ipi, yung nagpa-drug test na daw. Okay, tas sinan sa pideya. Negative naman daw. Sige, benefit of the doubt. Let's give him that. Give him or her that. Okay. Sana naman na follow on chain of custody. Very timely and relevant to our ano, ha, lesson. Sana naman. Walang adulterant. Wink. Okay. God bless sa medtech na nag-process ato. Okay. Ayan. Alright. Anyway, sinachiti. Alam nyo na yan. Okay. Anyway, next we have the care of reagent strips. How do we care, no? For the reagent strips. Ang tao mang gani imong kailangan, kailangan silang care. Unsa na lang dagay ang reagent strips? Pa! No? Sana all i-care. Sana all i-love. Okay. Drama. Okay. Number one, for reagent strips, of course, for storage, you have to store it with a desiccant. Alright? In an opaque tightly closed container. Okay? Now, of course, uh, na desiccant What's the purpose of desiccant to absor absorb the moisture? Alright? That may build up inside no, the container. Alright? Uh, and this moisture can deteriorate the reagent if magdugay. No? Um, aside from that, opaque. No? It should be opaque to protect the reagent strips from light. Alright? From, from light. Okay? Because light can also deteriorate your reagent strips. Number two, store below. 30 degrees Celsius, all right? But again, it should be at room temperature, pero you should not refrigerate or freeze the reagent strips. Again, still the same reason, it may deteriorate your uh, reagent strips. Number three, do not expose to volatile fumes. Again, still the same reason. Do not use past the expiration date, of course, no? Um, kay possible na ng reagents na deteriorate na. The enzymes are not working properly, so the results are possible po na mawala or ma... Maguba. All right. Next, do not use if chemical pads become discolored. Yes. So before you use a particular reagent strip, always look at the color muna. Kung wala ba uh, ay changes in color. Uh, usually, if if normal ragit siya or wala na siya na, na discolor, 
the colors before ni mo siya gamiton kay uniform lang siya. Alright? Uniform na green, uniform na blue ba? Pero if makakita ka usa ka pad na medyo murag nag-mix ng color na mo na siyang yellow tapos na green na parang ganun, nag-mix na ilang color, then that's a sign of discoloration. That's a sign of deterioration of the strip. So you have to discard the strip. Okay. And of course, you only remove the strips if gamito na siya ni mo. So, example, if ka mo mag-process mo urine, of course, ayaw sa magkuha og strip if mag-physical exam pa mo. Because there's, th that will that will contribute or medyo mutaas ang lag time ana before using the 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 strip no before using the strip okay so ang may tabo ana is possible na na-expose na imong strip to the environment okay pwede na na-deteriorate na mga reagent so paggamit na nimo pag abot sa chemical exam medyo erroneous na result so after physical exam uh, nag-check na mo sa color clarity dito pa lang mo mukuha og strip okay and then pagkuha sa strip diretso dayon og Dip sa specimen, no longer than one second, and then let your timer start. Okay? Pag kuha na yun ni mo sa test tube, it, it start ganyan mong time. Okay? And then after uh, after 30 seconds, so good na kag-read sa results. Okay? Alright, ayan. So that's for uh, your agent strips. Now take note sa pag kuha po sa strip, do not touch. As much as possible, you don't touch. Okay? The reagent pads. Okay? Kabantay naman mo, Ana, dears, na... Wait, na po kay picture. Ito na lang. Ayan. So as you can see, di ba, ang pinaka-tip yun sa multi-sticks, this is glucose, kanang light blue. And then under the light blue, di ba, na yung murag white, na murag, uh, white na siya na color, na murag siya square po Japan. This indicates na diri ka mag, mag-touch or mag-hold. Okay? And not the other way around. So glucose, bilirubin, pasaka na na siya. Alright? Okay. So that's it. So that's for the care of reagent strips. Ayun, drug test results. Wala lang. Akong point is, Ang diploma gani ma fake. Unsa na lagay ang test results? Chara, check lang. Woo, sino kaya yun? Hot issue. Chara, check lang. Okay. All right. Kaon na tag popcorn din. <laughs> Chara. Okay, next you have the QC. QC for your reagent strips. When do we perform QC? Of course, in every laboratory tests, bahalag asa na section you have to perform QC. Now, for QC, ang recommended nato is of course to check both positive and negative controls every 24 hours. Once every 24 hours or usually the beginning of each shift. Okay? The beginning of each shift. Usually, I think, muna kong experience po, based sa Soto, um, every morning, me, every morning at the start of the shift, dito may mag-QC sa mga reagent strips. Alright? Now, of course, um, you use your positive and negative controls. Uh, each manufacturers they provide their own positive and negative controls. So you have to test it to your reagent strips. And that pat ang expected results, uh, ma ang mugawas, no? Uh, to let you know or to give you an information na, okay, akong strips are working properly. So kung ang positive control kay dapat uh, 4 plus yang result, dapat imong strip 4 plus food. And if ang negative control, negative view, dapat ang strip negative food, alright? And if inana ang results, consistent lang siya with the expected results, then you are safe or you're confident that your strips are working properly. Alright? Okay. Now, of course, you have your um, log books, dears. As in, maka-experience mo na sa inyong hospitals. You have your log, log, log books for your QC, mga results. Alright? And you have to take note of them. Alright? Um, and practice na po na siya sa lab, dears, na every time mo open mo, bago na reagent strips, mga reagents, you write the date of opening, usually sa body of the bottle or container or sa taklo manggani. This is for inventory purposes, no? Uh, para makabalo kung kanus sa lakuto, bang usa ka bottle of strips, no? Pilara ka weeks, pilara ka months, for inventory purposes. And part na rin ng QC natin, okay? So that's part of, um, that's part of, um, sani? That's part of routine laboratory. <laughs> Uh, protocols and SOPs. All right. So question. Let's see. Intern. Yes. Intern. Let's see. Nga. Butang tanggalan bi. Intern Eldrick. Ayan. Sige. Intern Eldrick daw. Nasign siya sa CM sa ano. Uh, sa Soto. Okay. Sure kung gano'n siya magsibu. Ah. <laughs> Intern Eldrick. Nasign sa Soto. CM iyahang rotation karo na week. Tapos, nakabantay siya, na-assign siya. Gisugo siya siyang RMT sa Soto na Hui, El uh, Hui Eldrick or uh, ano siya natawag na? Gang, gang, kanang palihukog ano gang, kanang uh, perform QC sa mga reagent strips. Then si Eldrick, of course, vying for intern of the year or best in practice sa Soto. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Nag-perform din siya agad-agad, yes, pack. Tapos, nakanotice si Eldrick na wala na din siya negative control. So, nakathink si Eldrick na Pwede na mo gamit og distilled water. So akong question lang, should can we use distilled water as a negative control? If mahutdan kag negative control, pwede bang distilled water? 
No, sir. Okay. No ba? Intern Eldrick? <laughs> Intern Eldrick, yes. Okay. Sir. <laughs> Uh, can we use can we use ba your ano water as a negative control? Ginamit mo lang pangalan ko tatanungin tatanungin mo pa. Ako. <laughs> Bakit di ba pwede? <laughs> Joke. Pero ayun ko sir, feel gut feels I think no. No, I think no. So unsay mo final answer? Yes or no? Kana jung ano no, imo? No, 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 no. No, dapat with conviction. No. Bakit? Kasi kahit na uh, malang sample, I mean like, di ba, kasi nga daw negative controls, kaya ka ng mga rev no samples, I think. Pero like, since chemical, since, since chemical strip ni siya, so like, mm-hmm. we have a lot of factors to consider, like, okay. ka ng mga pH, or ka ng mga proteins, MAM, something, you know. Alright, okay, sige, acceptable. Andrea Champo, ha? Andrea Champo. Sir. Okay. Ngano man dilita mo gamit o water as a negative control? Ngano dili pwede? Or unsay mong unsay mong thinking? Pwede na gamito ng water as negative control or dili? Dili, sir. Okay, ngano man. As much as possible since urine man cha and there are substances na normally present in the urine, so it is important na ang ato ang negative control is like same same siya sa urine para okay. maka Negative control. <laughs> oh, bakit? Ano nakakatawa? <laughs> okay, so mo to sa Dre. Alright. Sige, Van. Agree na ka sa answer ni Andrea. Vanessa, nandiyan ka ba? Parang oo, yes. <laughs> Parang oo? Okay. <laughs> Pero tama naman. Tama ba yun, Van? Do you agree? Okay. Yes. Alright. Sige. <laughs> Ari ba na kuya Juan? Abiyog na yung mga leave. <laughs> Charot. Okay. Very good. That is correct. Thank you, Eldrick and Andrea and Vanessa. Tama. That's very much correct. No, we cannot use distilled water as a negative control. Primarily because take note that your sample is urine. And although urine is 95% water, take note 95 lang. All right. The remaining, ang component na niya kay mga solutes. And water, pure distilled water is wala wala siya solutes no so in a way murag as much as possible atong control is similar good to the sample that we are uh, we are examining and that is in the case urine so dita pwede mo gamit sa water because water doesn't have any dissolved substances unlike your urine so if mo gamit kag negative control na water of course imo expected you kay negative <laughs> kay wa gyud siya solo diba pero if at least mo gamit maganitag control na similar sa urine you are confident no na pag negative good in the presence of this solutes and all that uh, uh, pagtas mo sa strip niya, negative good siya ani na negative control, then you are confident na yung mga yung strips are working properly. Alright. Sige. Maginani day ko, no? Mga calling out names. Shara na tayo. Sige. <laughs> thank you, thank you, intern Eldrick and intern Andrea and intern Vanessa. Okay. Alright. Very good. Take note of that. Beers, dilita pwede mo gamit sa distilled water. Okay. Sige. Alright. Next, we go now to your... Um, Asa naman ta? Okay, reporting of results. Ayan. Now, for the reporting of results, depending on sa manufacturers and depending sa type of test. No, Number one, you have in concentration, you have mg per dl. Okay? Uh, concentration, good mismo. Number two, it could be words lang. No, Small, moderate, or large. Number three, you have using the plus system. One plus, two plus, three plus. So, semi-quantitative. You have the grading and then tapad sa grading, the possible estimated concentration of the analyte. And number four, you have you have as positive, negative, or normal. Ayan. So, exactly. Example sa number four is urobilinogen, di ba? Urobilinogen usually mo report as normal or the concentration niya. SGPH mo rin mo differ. As you can see, numbers good ato ang, <laughs> ato ang gina-report for SG and PH. Because again, ilahang pag-reporting kay mga numbers, no? PH is for acidity basicity and SG is of course ratio of the density of your fluid to density of water. So they are estimated in their respective units. Now take note of that. Basin ang question, which of the following is only estimated pa? in their respective units. You have SG and PH. Asa ni Gikan? Sa Brunzel. Alright. Okay. Sige. Now we go now to your automation. Because as I have mentioned, no, automation is um, automation is already no? Uh, before that na lang. Sige. Mag-ask na po ko. Automation is already common good in the laboratory and urine analysis is no exception. No? And we're very much thankful na automated na ang urine analysis because, you know, 
standardized na to ang ato ang pag-process in a way because again as i've mentioned chemical physical the rest medyo subjective gyud na siya in the, to the laboratory yan. okay some parts are subjective but in the advent of automation okay we have already developed something na in a way mas standardized ato ang pag-examine all right now for automation of your um uh reagent strips it follows the principle of reflectance photometry all right sige now uh kara sige dear Ano sa man ang imuhang idea about reflectance photometry? Sir, ano yata question, sir? Uh, what 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 do you ano sa imuhang murag idea about the reflectance photometry na principle? Like what is it about? <laughs> Sige, reflectance photometry. <laughs> you at na yung mga nanglive da. <laughs> Kalma sir, lang. Sir, okay. ko answer. <laughs> Sige, sige. Uh, try lang, try lang. Sige. Um, Marshak na ay uh, probe, sir, or is it like kanang, uh, when the light is going to reflect back from the analyzer, okay. then ma-analyze na siya, sir? So, lugar, right, okay. hindi siya absorbance po, okay. sir. Hindi po siya transmittance. Okay. So, reflectance. Sir, I'm so Wait, sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Nang dagdag ako sa inyo hang ano, inyo hang idea about it. In case lang balik, you know, this is very, this is a very common question in oral exam. Kaniyang what is the principle? What is the principle? So I'm just gauging kung how well or in a way yung sinong idea about it. Sige lang, wala raw ikal mara mo. It's not recorded or anything. Next, sige, Lynette dears, what do you think about reflectance photometry? Lynette, nagjan ka pa ba? <laughs> May ilan na ginii mga okay. There's yes, Lynette. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh -uh. Sige. Since wala man ko kabalo, sir, basa okay. na na ako ang nasa stress. Okay. <laughs> Sige, unsa man? Unsa may nasa stress? Um, reflectance photometry uses the principle of light reflection. Tama na kakara, sir. So, okay. hindi ako din niya. <laughs> All right, sige, sige. Noted, noted. All right, sige. Thank you, dear, sa inyong pag-effort og answer. All right. But in a way, that is, in a way, very much correct, no? With the name itself, you have reflectance photometry. Nasa pangalan na, you're measuring reflected light. Okay? Reflected light. So, ang principle, Anna, dear, is, of course, uh, imuha reagent strip, di ba? We take, took note na it will undergo color reactions. All right? Color reactions. Now, remember, di ba, kabantay mo na, the darker the color, all right, in general, ha, the darker the color, the more light is absorbed by this color. So, take note, di ba, kabantay mo, if naka-experience mo, if mag-wear mo black, no, na mga shirt or uh, clothing, tapos mo ato kaog init, di ba, murag, imong feel kay mas init, di ba? Because the black color of your shirt absorbs more light. Okay? That's why uh, it's much more Inet imo ma feel if mag black ka or darker color if mo ato ka gawas niya inet. Same po the principle here. So, ang principle ana is imo ha reagent strips, imo pasigaan og light. Okay? Imo pasigaan og light. Now, the darker the color, di ba we have mentioned, the darker the color, the more light is absorbed. Therefore, the more light man ang ma-absorb, meaning less na lang ang ma reflect. And this less amount of light reflected, muna siya itong ginamesure. So therefore, muna, inversely, proportional imuhang relationship. The less light is reflected, the higher the concentration of the analyte being tested. Alright? I hope nag-gets lang ito siya. Ngano gani? Because more absorbed light. Kaya ngano gani? Darker man ang color na na-produce sa yung reagent strip reaction. Alright? So again, light is shined. Ako na lang siya. Ako ipakita ang, ang imuhang Imuhang drawing. So you have the light source, okay? The light source will shine, no? Shine, Jesus, shine, yes? Shine on the reagent strip reaction. Now, let's say imuhang reagent pad, kay dark ang color. And usually, di ba, in reagent strip reactions, if darker ang color, it signifies higher concentration of the analyte. So if higher, if darker ang color sa reagent pad, pag siga sa light, more light is absorbed, less light is reflected. So less light will be detected by the detector, Therefore, imuhang relationship is kung less light ang reflected, higher concentration of the analyte. Why? Because darker ang color na na-produce sa imuhang reagent strip. Likewise, or in contrast, if lighter ang color, ani, less ang light na ma-absorb sa imuhang reagent pad, more light will be reflected, more light will be detected by your um, detector. 
O, di ba? Na-attack na siya, dear. Pasensya. <laughs> More light will be detected by your detector. Hence, less concentration pala ang imuhang analyte. Because again, of the notion that the lesser or the more light is reflected, the lesser the color is produced in the reagent pad, the lesser the concentration of the analyte in the reagent test pad. Nagets ra? Okay na, dears? Nagets ra ang points of reflectance photometry? Okay, because I tell you, dear, this is a very common question in oral exams. Promise, so kung nag-CI ko, usan niya sa mga question. What is the principle of your um, automated reagent strip readers? Okay, it is reflectance photometry. And what about it? <laughs> what about your reflectance photometry? You have to explain it. Okay, so I hope nag-gets lang to siya. Alright? Okay, wait, na question? Teka lang. Girl, na-attack na ako ang whiteboard girl. Okay. Sige. Any, qu any question? Ano say, na chat. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Sige. Don't forget this, ha? I tell you, I tell you sa second sem, common kayo ng mga oral exam. Sa motif, ma-assign mo CM. Okay? Gawas gini na question. Promise. Okay? What is the principle of your automated strip reader? Kung sa may purpose, Ana. Okay? O, dili na po itong makong kitawag si Kara o si Lynette. Ha, kato pong everyone who is listening. Okay? Take note of that. All right. So that's the principle of your automated reagent strip readers. Okay. Kalma na good mo eh. Sampun mo eh. Mapun mo others. Okay. Now before I proceed to the first parameter, just go first parameter pa niya for 15. Sige. Which is specific gravity. Do you have any questions there? Related, no? To the initial discussion nato on chemical exam. Okay. All right. Medyo clear lang, dear. Scary lang so far. Nasabtan lang atong discussion. Yes, sir. Okay, oh, yes, good. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, ano, dears, ha ka ng take note there, dears, ka ng, once mato na mo sa hospital assignments ninyo, all right, um, do not hesitate, bita, or do not be scared to ask questions, especially sa inyuhang med techs, okay? I mean, like, you know, we are encouraged, actually, to be independent. We are encouraged to uh, practice our own critical thinking skills in terms of, you know, processing the samples and all that. Pero it's also best to ask questions. Especially if wala ka kabalun sa yung ginabuhat. Okay? Or dili ka sure sa yung ginabuhat. It's best good to answer, uh, to ask questions. Bahala na lag kasaban ka or something. Pero most of your med good are very much open to for you for you to be taught. Okay? So, ask questions good. Jod, kaysa naman magpabibo ka, okay? Magpasagad ka dito na, ah, okay. Para sa itong negative control. Ah, okay running water kay negative control bitaw ni. Yeah, pag abot dito, sayup na to. So, always take note that a life is at your hands. No, once you process these samples, and any errors can be a matter of life or death, especially sa blood bank. Okay, so walag you errors, room for errors ang blood bank. No, um, sa I'm not saying ng ubang sections na room for errors, pero in a way at least ang errors sa ubang sections parang medyo makaya pa. No, pang makaya pang isolve, pero for blood bank talaga dears as in very dangerous. No, so. That's how we, ano ha? That's, how, that's my reminder to you, dears. Ayaw d'yo kahad ko pangutana. Kaysa naman magpa-bibo ka, alright? Pero sa'yo tayo mong gibuhat. Okay? Um, but after that, of course, once you already know on say process, then you practice na your critical thinking skills, you practice na your professionalism, your efficiency when working, ayan, and then the, the rest will follow. Okay? Ayan. So, inana na siya, dears. Okay? Take note of that. Especially sa mga dagko na hospitals, you have Soto, Chongwa, Gani, or mga other na hospitals na masign mo. Okay? Very, very important. Alright, sige. Any questions before we proceed to the first parameter? <laughs> Actually, ano rata, dears? Kuto ba tag pH ka no? I really thought na maabot tag ketones as in, pero sige lang. Dagang chika magot. Anyway, ayan. Sige. Alright, so we'll start first with the first parameter, which is your specific gravity. Actually, your spec grav, SG, was is, is actually a physical, no? It's part of the physical exam of urine deers. Take note of that, alright? Pero ako siyang gibot ng dirin kay nasa chemical strip. Okay, nasa chem strip. Okay? Sige. So, um, before we start, sige. What is the difference between SG and osmolality? Bisag ka na lang, ka na lang. Basic question, sige. Um, we'll have Marcos. Nijan ka po ba? What is the difference between your SG and osmolality? Sir, um, SG takes into consideration um, SG takes into consideration the number okay. of solutes and the density okay. of these solutes. Okay. While osmolality takes into consideration the uh, the number of the solutes, regardless of their regardless of their of their density. That's why um, usually um, sa analysis mas accurate. Mm -hmm. 
ang osmolality. Okay. Thank you for that, Marcos. Very good. And that is why you are Marcos. Ang galing. Okay, very good. That is much, very much correct. No, take note of that. Spec graph, dears, take note, is a dense, it's a ratio. No, it's a ratio. It's a comparison between the density of an unknown fluid, all right, compared to the density of a distilled water. The density of pure distilled water, good dears. That's why kabante mong SG, wala siya unit because it's a ratio. Okay? So wala unit, di ba, ang ratio. Now take note, your SG again, as Marcos have mentioned, thank you Marcos, uh, that is correct, no? Um, your specific gravity is only, is influenced by both the number of solutes and the size, ayan, the size, the mass of the particles, alright? So therefore, the higher, no, or the the more there are higher molecular weight na mga substances, the higher imuhang spec graph. On the other hand, imuhang osmolality, dears, take note, it's only affected by the number of solutes. So therefore, bahala kinsa pa ka, bahala dako ka, bahala ka gamay yung mangani ka, imuhang contribution to osmolality is still the same. Because, uh, di liman mumatter ako ang size. Mas mumatter kung unsa may kadaghanan. Okay? So example, if nakay one glucose and one NaCl sa imuhang sample, they contribute the same no, to osmolality. Whereas kung specific gravity ato ang i-take note or atong pag-usapan in the context of that, if you have one glucose and one NaCl sa imuhang urine or sample, of course, mas dako ang specific gravity niya because you have glucose. And glucose is a high molecular weight na substance. I hope na get lang to ang difference. Alright? So that's for your spec grav and uh, osmolality. Okay? So take note of that. Alright. Now, very important... Um, clinical significance of your spec graph is uh, the ability no its ability uh, kanisha it reflects no the ability of the kidney to concentrate ayan to concentrate the glomerular filtrate remember that um take note kaning mga dagko na substances there's glucose and protein once they are present in the urine it does not indicate the kidney's ability to concentrate rather the presence of these large mo molecules no they indicate a damage damage na gyud naguba na gyud dai naguba ang glomerulus ba or tubules pero if you want to measure no if you want to measure the concentrating ability gyud of kidneys you have to look for you have to measure specific gravity or osmolality why because again for concentration man good ang atong ginalantaw ay katong mga ionic solutes mga sodium mga chloride because remember in renal function, kanil sila na mga substances, sila ang mga gina reabsorb sila ang mga gina secrete So therefore, they contribute much to the concentrating ability of your uh, kidneys. So the presence or absence of these substances can already give you an idea na, ah, okay, akong kidneys, kabalo pa mo reabsorb. Akong kidneys, kabalo pa mo secrete. Akong tubules, kabalo pa mo reabsorb and mo secrete. Akong tubules, kabalo pa mo concentrate. Alright, so I hope na gets ra to. Ang glucose and protein, once present in urine, it's not indicative of the ability of the kidney to concentrate. It indicates possible damage na gyud, guba na gyud sa imuhang glomerulus or sa tubules. Okay, so I hope na gets nang to siya. Alright, now take note of these mga, ano ha, mga terms. You have of course the normal SG for a random specimen range is 1.002 to 1.030. Alright, uh, an average is about 1.015 to 1.030. Take note of that. So, according to Strasinger, muna average sa random. And for 24-hour urine, according to graph, 1.015 to 1.025. Alright. Now, take note, dears, your SG can reach as low as 1.002 and as high as 1.040, actually. No? Some references, mo mention, maabot siya 1.001, but never 1.000. Because 1.000 is the specific, specific gravity of distilled water. And it's physiologically impossible, yun, na mo release kag distilled water. Okay? Alright, ayan. Naagin na siya pakapin na gamay sa mong SG. Okay? Bisag man lang 0.001. All right. Okay. Now look at the table. When SG is less than 1.003, as mentioned, it is a not a urine specimen. But again, pwede pa siya mabot as 1.001. Muna gyud last hangyo. Okay. Last hangyo na lang good. 1.001. Basta never, never 1.000. All right. Uh, where do you see this low SG? Of course, in diabetes insipidus. So we'll take we'll we'll talk about the eye later. And of course, you have SG greater than 1.040. That is also physiologically impossible. The highest is 1.040. Greater than that. It indicates an exogenous, iatrogenic mga drug na substances that have been infused or injected in the patient. 
and it appeared in the urine after processing. All right? And usually, kanin siya mga radiographic conscious media or mati manitol. Matino? Manitol. Okay? All right. Radiographic contrast media. So, usually, during mga radiographic findings, mga x-ray, no? mga inana. And then, of course, manitol in some instances na kailangan ng patient to manitol. All right? Now, terms, of course, you have isostenuria, nasa pangalan na, SG is equal to 1.010. You have hyper, of course, greater than 1.010. And hypo, you have less than 1.010. Alright. Now, take note, dears, can you hyper and hypo? Uh, those are just descriptive terms to describe specific gravity na higher or lower, respectively. Ang isostinuria, dirata mas murag kailangan pagtuunan ng pansin. Remember that your SG, the SG of the glomerular filtrate, the fluid leaving the glomerulus, ang sagani SG ato, 1.010. Now, take note, if ang ihi ni mo, pagawas sa imuhang kidneys or pag ihi ni mo imo SG still 1.010 it indicates na ang imuhang kidneys di ay uh, imuhang urine or imuhang filtrate wala na change ang concentration so possible na ay problem na gyud di ay sa akong tubular concentration ability okay uh, successive ha successive na 1.010 pero if one time lang na 1.010 that's possible pero kung successive man gani then possible na ay problem it indicates na na base na na siya Loose, a loss, loose, loss of renal concentrating ability seen in patients with end stage renal failure. Kaya yung magina, gikan sa glomerulus, de ba? Ang imong filtrate, mo agi pa sa proximal convoluted tubule, mo agi pa sa loop of Henle, mo agi pa sa distal convoluted tubule, and then finally the collecting duct. And remember, sa to renal function na discussion, daghan kayo mga mahitabo na reabsorption and secretion dera. So sharo po diligent ma change ang S genia, no, de ba? So that's that's what you're going to think about. So if inana mangani 1.010 gyapon imuhang um, SG sa ihi, which is similar to the SG of the fluid leaving the glomerulus, then that could indicate the loss of renal concentrating ability of the kidneys seen in patients with end stage renal disease. So nagi problema. I hope na gets to siya. Okay, di ba? Ang filtrate, di kan sa glomerulus, magi pag PCT, loop of Henle, di ba niya? Daghan kay mga mari absorb, daghan kay mga masikrit na substances niya. Wala jud na change iya hang SG, saro pug dili ma change, di ba? So, dila na ka makaingo na. Ah, okay, na yung problema. Alright? So, I hope na gets lang to siya. Alright? Pero according to graph, the ideas, uh, dili na siya 1.010. 1.007 na daw. So, uh, instead of 1.010, ang SG leaving, uh, SG of the fluid leaving the glomerulus, 1.007 na daw. I take note lang according to graph, 1.007. Pero for our purposes, ato na siya pong i-maintain ang 1.010. Okay? Maintain na sa 1.010. All right. Now, for the specific gravity methods, you have uh, two major categories. You have the direct and the indirect. For direct, when you say direct, kanisa na mga methods nag-measure yun sa density, okay, of the fluid or of the urine. Remember that specific gravity is a comparison of density. So, kaning uh, direct, it's measuring density yun. All right. Ang indirect, it measures other properties of the sample and then it relate na siya to specific gravity. Okay. So, for example, refractometry, it measure ang refractive index. And then you have a uh, reagent strip, of course, magamit ka chemical reagents. All right? And then muna siyang i-relate sa specific gravity. Okay? So muna siya i-difference sa direct and indirect. Okay. So mag-practice na tayo ni Dears na mga orals-orals na type of questions kay in preparation sa inyo ang oral revalida. O, oh, di ba? Kay pagkahuman aning kompre, oral revalida na sunod. Okay? So at least aware na mo sa mga questions. Kana, very common questions na Dears ha. What is the principle of automated reagent strips? What is the difference between spec grab and osmolality? Nako, very ano. Okay, alright, sige. Ako lang, hinahinayin natin mga question ginagmay. Okay, na pinaorals. Alright, ayan. Okay, sige. Alright, that's for your spec grab na introduction. Alright, now we go now to your uh, clinical significance. Again, as mentioned, very important, dears. It indicates the loss of the ability to kidneys to concentrate. And another here is, of course, on sana disease, diabetes insipidus. Okay, nako, another Suki na question sa orals. <laughs> okay, so we go na to diabetes. Now, take note. Sige, babe. Before that. <laughs> Sige, tawag na po ko. Um, unsa day problema sa... Describe sa daw ang DM. Okay. Sige. Um, let's have... Marilyn. Uh, Pakidescribe na lang ang DM and describe ang DI. Um, Differentiate. Sir, correct me if I'm wrong. Pero um, DI, okay. sir, is... Ta um, based ako, I remember. Okay. Ang DI kay low ang specific gravity dayan 
taas ang iyahang water or like okay. water nga ba pag wait lang kada lang unsa iyahang unsa iyahang problem ato gusto unsa problema ano mang nagka di ay um uh, sa di ay sir kay na ay problem sa iyang ADHD pa yun remember correctly okay. so so na problem so um dili like dili ma retain ang or, or ang something lang is dili ba maka-produce <laughs> okay di okay. so Sige. mas mas maka mas dili ma retain ang water so okay magsigira o produ- ay magsigira ga urinate ang tao so okay uh, dili concentrated ang urine so low okay. ang spectra okay. okay tapos ang dm unsa di problema <laughs> sa dm <laughs> Ay, sa mo pa. Sorry, ma'am. Dili, 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 sir. Ako mo yun. Sorry, boli mo sa DM. Ang DM, sir, kay taas ang... Uy, wala ko niyo. Sa mo, sir. Wala ko niyo. Okay, na. Okay, na. Sige, sige, pala yung number. Ang DM, sir, kay taas ang glucose level. So, dili na siya mga kuan sa renal threshold. Ni... Ni increase na siya sa 180 mg per dl so okay. taas ang specific gravity kay concentrated ang urine okay i think all right sige sir wala ko ni ingon sir ha okay oy oy wala <laughs> okay na wala ko nagdumot mer wala po ko <laughs> joke to <laughs> okay yes sige then nandiyan ka pa ba then or na gotch na then tulog ka na then hala day na tulog na si then day <laughs> De, call a friend. <laughs> Nasakpan lagi. Ron na lang, Ron. Since roommates mo, good morning. Ni comment dili. Ron, are you still there? Natulog po ka? Sir, there, sir, ha? Okay. Do you agree ba? On say, on say, Judy, um, do you agree sa gingo ni Mayor? O na kayo gana hang i-add? I think na kayo i-add, sir. Um, okay, sige. Ang problem sige, sa di- diabetes insipidus, sir, is mm-hmm. on the um, production of ABH, that okay. is why there is polyuria. Alright. Um, whereas diabetes mellitus, there is polyuria, polyphagia, and polydipsia. Mm-hmm. So, kay sa, sa DI, sir, sige siya pangihi. That's why mo low iyahang SG. Pero okay. sa, sa diabetes mellitus, sir, um, okay. although sige siya og pangihi, pero, uh-huh. pero gasige man po siya kaon, sir. So, so, taas siya pa niya ang SG. <laughs> Nakipagbima sa sige ka on run. Joke. Joke. Na yun. Okay, sige. Alright, sige. Sige, I'll take that. So, thank you, Mayor and Ron. O, oh, ba? So, at least, ma-practice na mo, dears. Kay, uh, imagine na yung oral revalida, bas day face-to-face niya. Mag, ano mo, mag, inana, mag inana na, sorry, sir, sorry, sir, shocks. O, ba? Dapat, ano, with conviction na itong pag-answer, dapat dilita magkatawa. <laughs> okay. Katawa na lang mo ron during sa akong time. Pero sa inyong oral revalida, dapat wala na katawa ha wala na ano hindi na sure katawa okay alright sige serious na yun alright okay very good tama ano so take note dears for diabetes no both of these two types of diabetes they have or the patient exhibits polydipsia and polyuria magsige siya uhaw sige pud siya pangihi so lahi ni siya na uhaw kani water ni siya ha kanyang uhaw lahi po na siya now take note that ang DM unsa problema na ay insulin secretion na problem or insulin resistance. So, yung glucose, sige rangga, taas sa imuhang levels. No? Taas yung glucose levels, sige sa blood. So, what happens is for your body to compensate this high uh, concentration of sugar, you always have the urge to drink water. Kaya para madilute imuhang sugar, di ba? Now, for your DI, ang problem is, of course, there is deficiency in ADH production. Now, remember that ADH or vasopressin, yung main function is to retain water. Now, remember, if wala na ADH, so meaning wala na'y mupugong sa tubig sa imong lawas. So, magsige na lang, pagawa. Sige na lang siyang i-let go ang water. Wala na'y mupugong dai. So, what happened? Magsige po kag pangihi. So, therefore, ang difference lang is we look at the SG. Okay? The second difference is the SG. Now, ang SG sa DM, expected na increased ang SG. Nga man, because of glucose secretion. Remember, katong dimension ni Mer na nilapaw na siya sa renal threshold, tama yun, no? So, glucose will be expressed in your urine. And remember that glucose is a high molecular weight substance, di ba? And wh- what, do we, what did we say about high molecular weight substances? They contribute much to your specific gravity. Okay? That's why increase imuhang specific gravity sa patients with DM. Whereas in DI, low imuhang specific gravity because sige kag pangihi. Alright? Imuhang mga solutes dito, uh, madissolve rapun siya. But your sugar levels are normal. 
Okay, they're all functioning well. Yung mukhang pancreas, wala rin problema. So, your sugar is well uh, controlled. So, therefore, wala sugar na makitaan sa ihi. Okay? So, therefore, mukhang SG, diluted or uh, mubo because again, diluted yung mukhang ihi. Your solutes, mapadag ko or mapagagmay na dilute sa mukhang sigig pang ihi. Okay? So, I hope na gets ito siya. Alright? <laughs> okay, that's it. Ang difference ha, another very common question. What is the difference between DM and DI? Very, very basic. Okay? Alright, sige. Take note of that. Alright, thank you for that, Ron and Marilyn. Okay, sige. Alright. Now, this is from Brunzel Dears. This is a table, no? Of the possible correlations between the, the uh, sorry, results of specific gravity and uh, what are the possible reasons kano in any specific gravity. Now, take note lang, dears, greater than 1.040, that is physiologically impossible, and also 1.000. As I have mentioned, walang ihi, <laughs> kung ihi mang yun na, na ang specific gravity kay 1.000. So, I have a friend, who knows a friend, charot. I have a friend, intern me, intern me, ani, na siya sa VCMC, Visayas Community Medical Center, siya si Bu. <laughs> Asayin siya CM, nagprocess siya og urinalysis. Dahil yun, <laughs> yung reading sa SG kay 1.000. <laughs> so, ikasabot siya sa yung RMT. Pag-release na result na siya na, unsa may ni? Unsa may mong i-process? Too big? O, di ba? Hindi siya gitan siya. Nagkasabahan <laughs> siya. So, don't be, ano ha, be wary or be, ano ha, be uh, aware of that. Okay? 1.00, there is the SG of distilled water. And it's physiologically impossible for the body to produce this SG yun. Okay? At least man ang naipakapin gamay. Alright? Para makabalusyo ka na ihi na siya. Alright? And if greater than 1.040 also, ang highest good sa specific gravity is 1.040. And if higher than that, then that could indicate the presence of iatrogenic substances or mga uh, exogenous substances such as radiographic, contrast media, or uh, manitol. Alright? Take note of that. Okay. Now, in the case lang na makadawat ka fluid sa, e, uh, sa CM, then pag-check ni mo spec grab kay 1.000, and then successive testing yun kay 1.000, then that's possible na delete siya urine. Alright? Possible na na-adulterate siya. Alright? So, if you want to know if uh, unsa na, if urine bagud ganit siya, unsa tong single most useful analyte to detect an unknown fluid if it's urine or not. Unsa man to? Na Creatinine. Creatinine. Okay, very good. Creatinine. Okay, take note of that. All right. So, when actually possible scenarios, so if makadaot kag 1.000, basin too big yun yung di submit or na adulterate or unsa mang gani. So, if you want to check, you test for creatinine or even urea. Pero again, the single most useful good is creatinine. Okay, take note of that. So, dili dili tama uwat dears sa mga patients. O dili po tama uwat. Okay. Bahalag patient na siya or dili. Charot. Di na magpa-uwat. We have learned. I have learned. Charot. Check na lang. Okay. Now, we're going to the different methods of spec graph. So, before we proceed, any question, dears? Pinalingaw ko sa mga question-question lagi. I love it. <laughs> Baka wala mo nalingaw. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sige, ay sorry. Silent na day. Silent night na ta doing the pita. Good night, no? So, wala na mo nalingaw. Pasensya, sorry. Alright, so we'll start first with the first method of determination that is your urinometry, no? Or urinometer. So again, take note, the urinometer is a historical procedure. It's actually obsolete na. Wala na siya ginagamit. Um, it follows the principle of buoyancy. Okay, buoyancy. Alright. Now, Kung saan natin pagsulod or pagbutang sa urinometer, na siya spinning motion. Ato siyang spin gamay before nato siya sulod sa imuhang tube containing urine. Alright? So, um, ato siyang spin and take note, dapat dili siya maigo sa sides sa container. Because kung maigo siya sa sides sa container, possible na ma-affected iyahang result. Now, siyang principle, buoyancy. So, meaning, kung concentrated ang imuhang solution, di ba, mas mo float imuhang kaning urinometer. So, same lang, di ba? If maligo ta sa dagat, di ba? Mas mo float ta sa dagat because the water is denser compared to us. That's why mo float ta. That's the principle of your urinometer. So, mo displace siya o volume of liquid equal to its weight. Alright? So, Marsha Katonggi, same sa principle ni Archimedes, water displacement. Yes. To determine density. So, this is a direct method because it's determining or it's measuring density. Okay? Alright. Pero, Dagan siyang disadvantages. That's why um, dili na kayo siya ginagamit. And aside from that, dagan po siyang corrections. That's why medyo dili accurate ang results. Alright? So, number one, yahang temperature calibrated is 20 degrees Celsius. So, it needs uh, correction for temperature. So, what you do is you add, okay, 0 0.001 for every 3 degrees Celsius above, no, the calibration temperature. Mo add kag 0 0.001. And kung below 3 degrees Celsius, every 3 degrees Celsius below, the calibration temperature mo minus kag 
0.001. Aside from that, you also correct no for abnormal solutes, katong mga dagkong solutes, glucose, and protein. Because again, this principle detects density, so kanis sila maka-affected sa specific gravity. All right? And if you want to detect, again, di ba, concentrating ability of S of your kidneys, kaning mga um, dagko na solutes, glucose, and protein, dili ni sila useful. That's why we need to correct. Okay? So for glucose, every one gram of DL of glucose, minus kag 0.004 and for protein minus kag 0.003 and another major disadvantage there is the amount of sample na kailangan imagine kailangan kag daghan na ihi 10 to 15 ml so mahurot na lang imo hang mahurot na ang gihatag na sa na ihi sa patient okay diba so it's very uh, labor intensive food and very inconvenient okay now for calibration of your urinometer sa tong gamiton potassium sulfate solution um, and the reading should be 1.015 we can also use distilled water uh, as your calibrator and dapat 1.000 ang answer okay so that's the principle of your urinometer okay so this is your urinometer ayan that's the um <clears throat> that's the parts okay you have the calibrated stem na graduated Okay, nakagraduate. May pa siya nakagraduate. Charot, check ka lang. Okay, may mga iba dyan. Charot, okay. Anyway, ayan, so calibrated stem. Ayan, um, nagraduated, meaning na siya yung mga markings. Alright? And then you have the air bulb and the weight. Ayan. And then you have here the correction shortcut later sa pag-solve na to, no? Ang imuhang shortcut sa pag-answer pag or pag-solve pag problem. So later, pag-solve na to sa mga problems on urinometry and refractometry. So again, take note on si mga corrections niya. Na siya correction for temperature. Na siya correction for abnormal solutes such as protein and glucose. And lastly, if it dilute pag yung sample there's, kailangan po siya correct for dilution. So unsay unsa ito ang uh, pattern or uh, unsay flow sa ito ang pag-correct. Muna tag-correct sa temperature, followed by correction for dilution, okay? And lastly, abnormal solutes. So if na-correction na for, uh, or gihatagan ka value sa solutes and temperature, so i-correct na siya for temperature and solutes. If na pa dilution, apil ang dilution. So temperature una, followed by dilution, and then lastly, by solutes. So um, I'm not really sure kung sa reason nga no yung inanang flow, pero unahaw na ito ang temperature because temperature is an intrinsic property of the sample. Ang dilution man go, di ba? When you dilute the sample, in next atong dilution because again, when you dilute the sample, di ba, medyo mugamay ang value, alright? Because imo manggi butangan ng additional fluid para madilute. So, siya ang next. And then lastly, of course, the abnormal solutes because these solutes are mga extraneous, no? Mga outside na siya sa intrinsic property sa imuhang uh, fluid. Alright? So, temperature, dilution, and abnormal solutes. Muna siya imuhang, ano ha? Process o correction. Okay. Alright. Next, we have your, of course, refractometry or refractometer, also known as your total solids meter. Now, this is indirect now because, again, instead of measuring density, we're measuring refractive index. And what is refractive index? This is the comparison of the light, uh, velocity of light in air over the velocity of light in solution. All right? Now, take note, imahang refractometry dears is compensated well for temperature. Asa na, unsa na temperature range? Between 15 to 38 degrees Celsius or 60 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So, therefore, you don't need a correction for temperature. Pero, kailangan Japan mo correct ka for solutes such as glucose and protein. Why? Because again, maka-affect lagi po siya sa mohang SG. Even radiographic contrast media, maka-affect lagi po siya. Alright? So, take note of that. Okay. May sakit, sakit akong ano. Okay, anyway. Ayan. So, it requires correction for glucose and protein. So, take note. On sa ilahang similarities sa urinometry and refractometry, they both have corrections for glucose and protein. Pero on sa major difference, your refractometry wala na correction for temperature. Alright? Take note of that. Now, for the procedure, as you can see, dears, pilara na sample ang kailangan, one to two drops. So, very, very economical, very convenient, kay gamay na sample ang kailangan. And how do we calibrate? Take note of those values, dears. Dako, nako, very ano, important. Distilled water, dapat 1.000. 3% NACL, you have 1.015, plus and minus 0.001. 5% uh, NACL, you have 1.022, and 9% sucrose, 1.034. Dapat mauna expected ng mga specific gravity. So as you can see, how do you remember lang? 3%, <laughs> multiply rin 5 para mahimong 15. Charot, ayan. 315. And then as you go higher sa concentration, of course, imong spec grab mo sa kapun. Okay? So, take note of that. As you go higher sa concentration, musaka po ni muhang specific gravity. Alright? Okay, so take note of that. So, for calibration, of course, mag-una sa ka sa distilled water. You calibrate first with distilled water. If chakto na na 1.000, okay, wipe the prism 
and then you can use one or two of these solutions to uh, calibrate also. And once chak to mga readings sa kada concentration ay mong then you can proceed now with urinalysis because you're sure na na okay, it's working properly. All right? Okay, so that's for your refractometry. So on some major principles are refractometry. Ayan. So this is the refractometry na principle no remember diba if naka try na mag refractometer you put the solution here sa prism diba remember there is a prism and then after butangan nimo og ihi sa refractometer sa prism diba mo face ka uh, mo face ka or mo siyang latawon on a good light source because you need a source of light no either from the window or from the light in the like fluorescent light no and this light what happens pag strike niya sa solution okay pag strike niya sa solution if letter a muna if the solution is less concentrated what happens is iyang angle of refraction all right iyang angle of refraction or bending of light is larger okay so what happens ang light kay padulong sa lower end of the scale phase or sa graduated na mga markings so ang unsay unsay maigo niya na unsa ni unsay maigo na marking is of course ang lower end okay and dira na makabalo na ah, okay so lower end dia siya yang naigo so therefore lower na po ang concentration sa imong sample and in contrast imagine if concentrated ang sample gikan ang light padulong diri all right the light uh, angle of refraction or the angle of bending is lesser all right lesser so therefore ang light kay padulong na siya sa higher end of your scale or sa graduated cylinder uh, sa imong graduated cylinder sa graduated na marking sa mga values no so therefore ang yang maigo na light or yang maigo na part is the upper na mga markings uh, so imong makita is kaning sa taas ayan ito filled with strong solution so therefore sa taas man sa markings imong nakita so therefore high value pud imong makita high value high concentration di ay imong substance all right so here's a picture salinity lang ni sa dears so again still the same light source it bends a prism if very concentrated less ang angle of refraction refraction so what happens is maigo siya diri sa upper upper kan is upper diri so imo makita is katong higher end pod no so which is reflective now of the of the concentration no or specific gravity and kung uh, less concentrated ra ang sample larger ang angle of refraction so diri siya sa ilalom the pit mo igo ang light so imo makita is kani mga lower end lang which is correspondent na to the specific gravity or concentration of the solution all right so i hope na gets lang ang principle sa refractometry okay so that's for <laughs> refractometry na principle and this is the procedure again one to two drops ay kailangan ayan then dapat in ani ang appearance and then again you look through the eyepiece dapat na kay light na i light na mo agi diri na part sa prism so it's either mo Mulantaw ka sa window or sa light source para at least nitrogen light and then of course you look at the line boundary kung asa siya nag-intercept and that is the specific gravity and after using you wipe the prism all right with a tissue paper and water all right imo jong i wipe para mawala ang imo specimen okay all right that's for uh, refractometry okay sige na guess right dears any question Kerry lang. Okay. So, basta hindi ay pangutanan mag principle sa refractometry. Nako, pati. Okay? Ayan. So, it measures refractive index. No? A refractive index is a comparison of the velocity of light in solution uh, compared to velocity of light also in uh, air. And uh, appeal sa velocity, dears, is the angle. No? The angle of the light, uh, the angle of refraction or the angle of bending sa light and the speed of light. So, muna siya velocity. Okay? Alright. So, physics na siya, dears. I don't like that. Okay? <laughs> Alright. Sige. Any questions so far? Carry na? Or medyo na yung mga questions? Sige. So, kung pangutan ng tamo, carry na. Charat lang. Chaka. Okay? Ayan. Sige. So, we go na to solving. Alright. Susko, sana naman. So, we'll start first with urinometry. So, inani yung mga solving, dears, sa urinometry. So, you're given um, a initial SG reading sa urinometer. So, in this example, you have 1.0 25. Okay? It says here na imuhang calibration temperature is of course 20, pero ang urine temperature is 26. So therefore, it is higher. So what you do is you sub subtract 26 minus 20. Imuhang answer is 6. Now, diba remember for every 3 degrees Celsius above the calibration temperature, imuhang addan og 0 0.001. So how do you know pila ka 0 0.001 imuhang i-add? I-divide ang 6 by Three, diba? Remember, there is uh, for every three degrees Celsius, uh, mo add kag 0 0.001. So your answer here, six divided by three is two, diba? So kaning two, imo na i multiply now by point zero, point zero zero 0.001. and that is equivalent to point zero zero 
two. And because it's higher compared to your calibration temperature, ato siyang i-add. So plus 0.002, the answer is 1.027. Okay. Tama ba? Paras ba tayo ng answer, dears? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Now, take note if temperature na siya. Pero what if you mentioned pa na napay, uh, napay um, abnormal solutes, then padayin na ka. Minus 0 0.004, minus 0 0.003, depending on the grams per dl. Okay, so second refractometer uh, na question, ayan, take note, na siya abnormal solutes, 2 grams per dl of both glucose and protein respectively, and ihang temperature is 37. Okay, so do we have to correct ba for temperature or dili na? No. Okay, wala na. So wala na tayo correction for temperature. So diretso na tasa sa muhang uh, abnormal solutes. So you have initial SG of 1.025. Alright? Minus, unahon na to, bisagin sa rin una. Ako lang unahon si protein. So you have 2 grams man. 2 grams of uh, protein. ba? And remember, for every 1 gram of protein, 1 gram per dl of protein, mu minus kag 0 0.003. In this case, 2 man. So atong i-multiply ang 2 grams per dl sa 0 0.003. Alright? That's for protein. Okay. Next, for glucose, still the same, di ba? But this time, for glucose, if glucose mangani, minus 2, okay, 2 grams per dl, times 0 0.004. So, may tabo, 1.025 minus 0 0.006 minus 0 0.008. And I believe the answer here is, Jojo wa in charot, the answer here is 1.011. Am I right? Tama ba? Press yes. Ang answer, dears? Okay. Take note, gano'n siyang gamultiply gani? Because, dili man 1 gram per dl ang imuhang protein and glucose. 2 grams per dl man. And diba, ato ang, ato ang note is for every 1 gram per dl of glucose or protein, mu minus ta. So this time, 2 grams man, munang gimultiply nato siya. Alright? So, kanin siya protein, glucose. Bahala, kamunay bahala kung sa'yo una. Either ra, pwede ra. Okay? Alright. So, 1.011. I hope na-gets lang sa'yo pag-solve, ha? Very, very simple rapo siya na sol solving, no? So, take note of that. Basta for refractometry, dears, you don't have to correct for temperature. So, be careful when reading problems like this. Okay, what if mo ingon dito na, the patient or the laboratorian used a refractometer. The calibration temperature is at 20. The urine temperature is at 26. Nako, pag... <laughs> Pagkita niyo atong temperature, nag-solve mga kadayon, wala ka kabantay na refractometer dito siya. So basta refractometry, you don't have to uh, correct for temperature. Pero kung urinometer, dito na ka mo correct yung temperature. Okay? Alright. And take note, dears, again, both refractometer and urinometer should be corrected for glucose and protein. Alright? And the refractometry reading is lower than your urinometer reading by pila, 0 0.002. Okay? Because of mga machine differences or procedure differences. So siya ang many differences nila. Okay, 0 0.002. Okay, all right, sige. So that's for your um, urinometry and refractometry. Now, napoy cases, dears, na medyo um, na yung ubang refractometers na ang kutob nila na SG kay 1.035. So what if pag check ni mo or pag process ni mo sa refractometer, nilapaw no? ang imuhang boundary sa 1.035. So it means it's highly concentrated. That's why we have to dilute. So how do we dilute? We just multiply the dilution factor all right, to the last two digits of your um, given SG. So in this case, you have 1 is to 4 na dilution and initial reading of 1.014. So therefore, dilution factor is diba, reciprocal of the dilution. So reciprocal is 4. You then multiply 4 to the last two digits, which is 14. So 14 times 4, that is equal to 56. Ato na siyang i-add diretso sa 1.0. Therefore, ang imuhang original SG is 1.056. Okay, very high. Taas kayo. 1.056. This is the original SG before dilution. Okay? Alright, so that's your how we solve for dilution sa spec graph. You just get the dilution factor, multiply sa last two digits of your reading sa SG, and then adani mo siya og 1.0 agad-agad. That is the original SG reading before your um, dilution before ka nag dilute okay all right so i hope na gets lang to siya all right any questions there's my job basin mo extend ta gamay lang yun gamay lang all right any questions Karina, na gets lang okay 
All right, sige. Now we go na to the reagent strip, no? Muni siya tong after actually. The reagent strip method is of course an indirect method, okay? Indirect because we're using chemical reagents. Now what is the principle of your specific gravity? The change in the pKa of a polyelectrolyte. So, uh, in a sense, para mas simple lang yun, ang point ra ni Dears, in the presence of ionic solutes. So, atong gina-detect diri Dears kay mga ionic solutes. So, sa matong gina-detect mga ionic solutes, kinsama na sila, mga sodium, potassium, katong mga nai-charged. Okay? So, glucose, protein, radiographic, contrast media Dears, dili ra maka-affect sa imuhang reagent strip technique. Okay? Alright. Or dili ra maka-affect sa imuhang si reagent Okay, nawala na po ko, dears, or naara ko. Nadunggan na? Okay, Ra? Am I back? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> so, mukha niya akong cellphone, right? Sorry. Okay, anyway, ayan. So, the point right here is the more that you have ionic solutes, dears, katong mga charged particles, alright, ay mga polyelectrolyte, mas daghan siyang H plus na i-release. So, therefore, if mas daghan ni mohang ionic solutes, meaning mas concentrated ni sample, alright, mas daghang H plus siyang i-release sa imuhang uh, sample or sa imuhang fluid or sa imuhang urine or sa imuhang reagent pad. Therefore, the reagent pad becomes acidic. Okay? That's why, lang tawa, if taas ang SG, 1.030 on side color, yellow. And di ba, increase ng H+, Anna. Asagi ka ng H+, sa polyelectrolyte, which is the reagent found in the reagent pad. Nga nga nang increase iya ang H+, it's because the higher the ionic so Okay, pasensya again. Ulit. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so again, balik. No? Asa gikan ng H+, gikan sa polyelectrolyte. Okay? Because again, the more ionic solutes ang naa, the more sodium, potassium naa, the more H+, iyang ihatag. So, mas mo acidic imuhang reagent pad. Therefore, imuhang color is yellow. Okay? Alright. So, that is uh, the principle no, of your uh, specific gravity na reagent strip. Now, what are the reagents? Taas kaya ang alan, but take note lang, dears, na siya'y brom thymol blue. Murag yun, dears. Okay? So, mga question po na sa exams. Which of the following is the reagent in your reagent strip for unsa na parameter? So, lantawa ng na'y brom thymol blue. Okay? Basta taas. Okay? Na'y taas ng alan before brom thymol blue. That's specific gravity. Now, what are the interferences? As you can see, false positive, high concentration of protein. Now, take note, diba, as I've mentioned, dili lagi siya ma-affected by protein. But in cases lang yun na taas kaya ang protein, pwede na siyang mo ang protein kay mo sapaw na gitsa no <laughs> mo sapaw na siya sa imuhang uh, imuhang reagents possible na noon na maka false positive siya or false increase now false negative of course highly alkaline urine di ba remember na ang iyang principle kay mas kung mas daghan ang solutes na present mas daghang H+ na ihatag all right so mas mo acidic para mas mutaas so if alkaline ang urine therefore ang uh, ma-detect sa imuhang strip or sa reagent is the alkalinity so therefore imuhang H+ na ma-release kay gamay lang from the polyelectrolyte so therefore imuhang result kay low Okay, so uh, that's for the interferences sa imuhang specific gravity. And of course, for notes, no, if the pH of urine is greater than 6.5, manufacturers request or recommend to add 0 0.005 to your reading para mas para ma-compensate tong difference. Okay, all right, that's for your reagent strip for specific gravity. Okay, so the change in the pKa of a polyelectrolyte. Nako, very common question din, dears, possible sa oras. Describe the principle of your parameters. Nako, talaga, sinasabi ko talaga yan. Okay? Alright, dapat prepared tayo. Alright? Okay. Now, what are the color changes expected? Blue through shades of green to yellow. As you can see, as mas magkataas ang concentration or mas magkataas ang specific gravity, mas daghang H+, plus ang ihatag sa imuhang polyelectrolyte. Therefore, since daghan mang H+, plus, ang imuhang reagent pad mahimong acidic. So, therefore, ang colors po ni mo kay uh, pag makataas na medyo padulong na sa acidic na color yellow or inana. Alright? Okay, that's for the color changes in reporting of spec graph. And the last method for spec graph is of course harmonic oscillation densitometry. So nasa pangalan na harmonic, no? it uses sound. No? Marsag music paminawan. Ayan. So it is based on the frequency of sound wave 
entering solution changes in proportion to density of solution. So, pag naay mo ang solution or ihi, imo siyang pagian og sound waves. So, the changes in the oscillation or frequency of sound waves is directly proportional to your uh, concentration. So, if mas daghang sound waves, mas daghang um, oscillation, mas daghang oscillation sa sound waves or frequency, mas, dagha, mas taas ang concentration sa solution. Alright? And the result is considered valid to be uh, it's valid up to a specific gravity of 1.080. And this is the principle used by one of the first semi-automated machines for urinalysis, the yellow iris. Your yellow iris or International Remote Imaging System ayan, uses this principle. Ang iris diagnostics, kailangan lag 6 ml na ihi. 4 ml will be given to the microscope for microscopic and 2 ml for the mass gravity meter. And this measures specific gravity for um, specific gravity <laughs> using the principle of harmonic oscillation densitometry. So, muna siyang mass gravity meter, dears. So, diribot ang ihi, kaning U-tube, <laughs> U-na shape na tube. And then, kanisha siya produce sa electricity and sa sound waves. So, muagi ang sound waves, didi. And the changes in frequency sa sound waves is proportional to the concentration of urine and i-measure na siya diri sa kilid. Alright? So, kung daghang changes in the frequency of sound waves or sa oscillation, then that indicates high concentration of your urine. Alright? That's harmonic oscillation densitometry. Again, obsolete na siya. Wala na kayo siya perform. But again, this is one of the initial principles of the first, no? One of the first semi-automated urinalysis machines, your iris diagnostics or yellow iris. Alright? Okay, so before I proceed to the last topic lang for today, dears, <laughs> PH, do you have any questions so far? Ako, it's raining. Sana naman akong connection. Dili na pun magtukar. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, sige. Any questions on spec graph before we leave? Ah, before we leave. Before we proceed to the last topic na lang. Medyo extend natin light, dear. Sa light lang yun. Okay. Alright. Sige. Again, the main importance good of your spec graph, dears, is for evaluating no? the kidney's ability to concentrate, the tubules' ability to concentrate the urine. All right. See, so for our last topic, there's the second parameter is your pH. Of course, your pH refers to the acidity diba, or basicity, alkalinity of a solution. For the body, of course, it evaluates the kidney's ability to maintain the acid-base balance in the body. Of course, you already know that kidneys are one of the the major organs no, in regulating the acid-base balance in the body. All right? And how, how does the kidney do that? So renal function, of course, they secrete H plus ions in the form of ammonium, uh, phosphates, and weak organic acids, and the reabsorption of your phosphoric acids all right, for H plus and also bicarbonate. That's how they uh, maintain the acid-base balance in the body. Now, what is the main importance or one of the clinical significance of pH is, of course, it's important in identification of crystals. Yes. And determination if satisfactory ba ang muhang urine specimens. Why? Because again, in crystals, remember, uh, there are some crystals na mo precipitate no, out of this, uh, out of urine in cases na taas ilahang concentration and in their preferred uh, pH. Na ubang crystals na precipitate out of um, in acidic urine or alkaline urine. No? And because of that, makabalot na ah, okay. Kanisya na crystals, kay makitaan sa acidic and alkaline urine, pwede tang mag-adjust sa tong diet para dili nila ma-form ng mga crystals. Okay? Alright, that's the importance of knowing pH. Now, normal pH is random 4.5 to 8. As you can see, pwede siyang acidic, pwede siyang alkaline. That's why wala yung morag abnormal results sa mga pH. Okay? It can be acidic, it can also be um, alkaline. The first morning, uh, specific, uh, the first morning pH is quite acidic, five to six. All right, and a pH of nine or eight point five and above, it indicates improperly preserved urine. Why? Because again, urea in your urine is converted na to ammonia by your bacteria in improperly preserved specimens. So that's why. Uh, mutaas ang pH because of the ammonia. Alright. Nung ano mang acidic yung mga first morning urine, it's because during sleeping, alright, the body undergoes an acidotic state because of hypoventilation. Alright. So because of that, uh, acidotic stage stage during um, sleeping, medyo acidic ato ang ihi. And of course, alkaline tide, as we have mentioned, after lunch or after a meal, the body exhibits an alkaline tide and the urine becomes alkaline because again, the H plus ions are concentrated to the gastric mucosa to produce HCl. Alright? So, diba? Sa question nato sa, sa physical exam, diba? Katong cause of turbidity na ay patient na ni Kaon, dahil yun, nagpa-urinalysis siya, normal na yung mga chem strip, results, 
reagents or results, pero na turbidity, di ba? And ang answer ato kay phosphate. So that was a really good question, good. Chada siya na question, good as in. All right, so take note of that. The alkaline type. All right, okay. Now, for clinical significance, of course, as we have mentioned, respiratory metabolic acidosis, alkalosis. Um, of course, there's, if imuhang alkalosis or, or acidosis is um, not kidney origin, dili renal origin, you are expected ng ihi ni mo kay acidic kung na kay acidosis and alkaline siya if you have alkalosis. Except for, kinsa ganito na disease, um, sige, manawag ta. All right. Um, Ingrid, yes, nandiyan ka pa ba? <laughs> Nandiyan ka pa ba in greed? <laughs> Natulog na. Wala na? Wala na? Okay. Call a friend? Okay. Luje, ikaw na lang Luje. Okay, since nakita naman siya tikaw. Luj. Okay. Alright. Once again, itong disease, no? Uh, sa urine. Ah, kanina lang. In renal tubular acidosis, ayan, renal tubular acidosis, what is the expected pH of your urine from patients with renal tubular acidosis? Alkaline, sir. Okay, alkaline. Ngano gani? Ngano magka-alkaline ang ihi sa patients with renal tubular acidosis? Okay, kuan sir ang mga H plus ion sa sa tubule sir kay ginary absorb balik mo nandi siya ma-release sa urine mong alkaline. Okay, all right. Sige, I'll accept that. Now take note there sa um in your oral exam again, make sure na um, try your best to really speak in English ha, kaya basa na iba na na iba mga CI na basin particular ana, okay? So very good. Chapto to luge, no? So ano ganing alkaline ang urine sa patients with renal tubular acidosis? There's a defect, no? The tubules are defective in secreting H plus ions and even reabsorbing bicarbonate. So what happens is ay mo hang alkaline, ay mo hang urine puno og bicarbonate, so mo nang basic and wala siya H plus ions. That's why it's alkaline. So take note this ha, very I emphasize it. Mugawas na sa inyong exam sa compre na ko sinasabi ko talaga. What is the pH, no, of your pH of the urine of patients with renal tubular acidosis? So wag na maisip, it is Alkaline. Ako, sinasabi ko talaga. Sinasabi ko talaga, dears. Okay? Alright, ayan. Very good. Okay, take note of that. And of course, renal calculi formation and precipitation identification of crystals. Yes. As I mentioned, di ba na yung mga crystals na ganahan sila like acidic, na yung ba na alkaline. And these crystals are usually the precursors for stone formation. Because on sa may, on sa may composition sa renal calculi or stones, the crystals. Okay? That's why muna siya important. Si crystal tan, charo, tsaka lang. Okay. Now, muna siya, if, ano, dears, again, same from Branzel. Branzel, Gapon, same sa spec graph. Unsa mga reasons, kanong kani ang pH. Alright? Uh, take note again, if pH less than 4.5, it's impossible. It could be due to adulteration na, basi na i-add ang patient. And same with uh, pH greater than 8.0. Could be adulteration, giadan o bleach na alkaline. Or again, improperly preserved specimen. Urea has been continuously transformed to ammonia by bacteria, therefore increased ang pH. Okay. Now, what are the causes of acid and alkaline urine? Of course, acidic imong urine if you have DM and starvation because of the increase in ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are acidic. High protein diet and high meat, no meat, M-E-A-T, na mga diets, they produce acidic na mga byproducts. Cranberry juice, yes, it can cause acidic urine. That's why, according to Strasinger, if you are prone to mga urinary tract infections, no, uh, you, it is recommended that you drink cranberry juice because it will make your urine acidic, therefore, uh, stopping or inhibiting the growth of these bacteria causing UTI. Oh, diba? Emphysema, dehydration, diarrhea, presence of acid-producing bacteria, and of course, medication. Emphysema, diba, there's problems in lungs, so possible mag-hypoventilate ka. Dehydration, um, imuham, uh, possible na... Um, Ah, okay, tama. Dehydration. Possible na makoncentrate yung muhang H plus ions sa yung ihi kay gaman na yung tubig. Yes. Diarrhea, of course. Uh, presence of acid-producing bacteria. E. coli and of course, medications. For alkaline urine, ayan, number one, nagidira, dear, renal tubular acidosis. Nako, wag na mag -isip. You have also vegetarian diet. The byproducts of the breakdown of vegetables kay mga bicarbonate. So, base, no? After a meal, alkaline tide, vomiting because of increased vomiting na tang, -tang ng HCL sa imuhang stomach, alright? So, possible na mo exhibit of alkalosis ang patient. Old specimens, of course, as we have mentioned, hyperventilation and the 
presence of urease producing bacteria. All right. So because again, they convert urea to ammonia. All right. Okay. And what is the reagent strip principle? The double indicator system. So very easy lang yun. Among all the parameters, dear, ang pH yun ang pinakasimple. No? It uses two reagents, methyl red and bromthymol blue. No? And depende sa pH, no? kung medyo acidic, 4 to 6, si methyl red ang muriak. And kung 6 and above, si bromthymol blue. Okay? That's why ang colors niya kay pwedeng red to yellow to blue. All right? Now, no known interfering substances. Pero, again, what you have to take note lang is the runover phenomenon. Because dual ang pH sa protein. And your protein pad is buffered at, a, at an acidic pH. All right? pH of 3. So, if katong fluid gikan dito sa protein, maabot sa pH, all right? Makakos nun siya interference or makakos siya og false acidic na reaction sa imuhang pH. So, imong result kay falsely acidic because of the runover from adjacent pads, especially sa protein. All right? And of course, old specimens, mas basic na siya because of the conversion of urea to ammonia by the bacteria. Correlations with other tests, of course, nitrite leukocytes for the presence of bacteria and microscopic, especially for identification of crystals. All right? Okay, that's for pH. And of course, the my expected colors, orange through yellow and green, and finally to blue. All right? So that's for pH. All right. And that's all for today, dears. <laughs> Pasensya, medyo nag-extend light. Okay. Pasensya. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. So before we end, do you have um, any uh, questions?